Welcome back to Super Tuesday Recap. This is your host, Chris. We have Jeff, Deepom, and Shannon here, and we are all here to uh, do something we were supposed to do. It's, it's been a while. We were supposed to be talking about The Gifted. We're doing episodes, uh, what is this? Episodes eight and nine of season two of The Gifted. Uh, that's episode eight is The Dream, and episode nine is Game Changer. And I kind of want to rename both of these. I know they do everything with the M's, and we kind of brought this up with episode 10. has kind of got a lot of M's in it, too, with capitalizing the M's. But I really want to call these episodes, Your Dick is Not Your Friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Because um, so there's a lot of that going on here, man. There's, there's, there's a lot of, you, you know, between Andy and what was what was old boy in the um, that Lauren was talking to at... Um, Soundwave? <laughs> yeah, right. It's just like... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, your dick is not your friend. Like he, he was always like, I can use. Yeah, I'll I'll take you to see the the the, the cold storage facility if I could take you out to lunch. I was like, you dumb fucking puberty man, just <laughs> well, blood in the water when he said lunch. <laughs> he's supposed to be a doctor, <laughs> a nurse. He's a teenager, you know research student, research student. She's a teenager. I, I, again, I'm not saying I'm not saying that's not right. I'm just saying you had two teenage boys here. Your dick is not your friend. Just, your dick is not your friend. <laughs> that's all I'm saying here, man. And it's not like I'm saying anything that's wrong here. You guys know it's true. Just, you know, puberty, man. What can I say? Um, <laughs> I literally had in in for the, for the first episode when Mallory shows up, going like, "Oh, she's finding a cure. This is this is a cure." Did anybody else just kind of automatically go there already? Just like I don't trust any human doctor that's trying to help mutants. Just. You know, control I mean, their powers. I knew she was not Mora from the minute she showed up. She played like she always plays a character that's shady. This actress, <laughs> so I knew I'm it was coming. Scandal. I don't trust her for one second. <laughs> oh, she, you, know, you know what it was for me? She started sounding like one of the white liberals. It's like. You know, I'm just, oh, I just, you know, of course the mutants are upright and we, we keep them in cages and stuff like that. Like, I really care. I'm just like, oh, God, she's going to, you know, all this over like a, you know, a Thanksgiving dinner and just like, you know, I, I support your cause. I really do. And I'm just like, oh, where's the turn coming? Where's the turn coming? Well, even before the turn, like, I, I liked how they've kind of touched, especially in the series, about how some of these mutant powers are actually like physical dangers, like even for the people who have them. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so the idea that she was helping people who couldn't live with their powers, I mm-hmm. thought was pretty cool at first. But you're right; the air was always there. The turn was always coming. And, and, and I'm saying that's why they almost got me. That's why. That's why again, I love this show. Is they they make it real. So the idea of like, okay, because you know when 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 the 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 trucker showed up, they were like, oh well, I don't know about this. Like, what are you doing? Are you you are you taking their X gene from them? Are you su- completely suppressing? It's like, no, like. These people cannot live with their power. Some people, a matter for, she was like, some people see it as powers, but I see it like sometimes it's like a debilitating thing that allows them so they can't function. You know that they. I think she called it diabetes. Basically, yeah. And so you're like, oh, actually, that's a good point. You know, what if there is, a, especially when you don't have like an X Men out there training people to use their powers. If you have a devastating power. How can you? What can you do? And so, what, what was the boy's name? The 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 dude that was helping Lauren. Oh God, I forget his name. I had it down. I didn't write it down. He look a Nick. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna say it's racism that we can't remember the name of the Asian character. Was it? It was. Was it Noah? No, it wasn't Noah. Yeah, it was Noah. I knew it started with the N, so I was almost there. It was like it's Nick. No, it's Noah. Um, when Noah was like, yo, you know, he basically, I, at first I thought he had like, I thought they were going to call him Havoc. I thought he was going to call him Alex. <laughs> I really did. The way they said him was like, maybe, is he, don't tell me your last name is fucking Summers, you asshole. Don't do this. And they didn't, thank God. When he was like, yo, I, you know, my, I couldn't control my powers and, and she helped me so that I could, now I can function as a normal, you know, I, I can, I can, I can now function and be, be a help. I was like, no, that makes sense. And everything was going fine until she she did that thing where uh, just that mm, that white liberalism. Well, also, they were using the language. So you saw it coming when he was talking about like she's come up with a solution. Mm-hmm. And like those are all just like <laughs> Nazi terms. I was like, oh, and, she's Hitler. And, well, and they can never they can never they can never control. Like when he was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Her brother was a, is a purifier. But like, okay. 
Yeah, her brother started the purifiers. Right. Just mm -hmm. come on, guys. Well, like, I'm sorry. This is one of those. It's like, it, to me, it was like one of those things where you have somebody goes, "Well, no, no, I sit down. The, I sent a. You know, I still go home to Thanksgiving with my Trump Trump voting parents, and we have a good time." I'm like, at some point, you got to tell me there's some things that are said across that table that you smile and nod at, going, "Could you kind of sort of agree with?" And so what you find out here is her brother started the purifiers and she was like, well, no, 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 I don't agree with him. He's went, he's, he's going the violent route. I'm going a more humane solution. And I'm like, no, you're not. That's it was the same. As, as opposed to addressing his bigotry, you're like, we're going to give, take away the finger and he bigoted against. It's like, he started the clan, but I figure if we bleach all the black people, he won't have anyone to hate. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> right, right, dude. Like, I was like, oh my, this is one of those things where I'm like, I think she might be worse. Because she, she then, at, at, when, they, when, they, when they finally confronted her, and she basically was like, well, yeah, you know, Lauren shouldn't have been born. Like, Noah shouldn't have been born. Noah's not going, wait, why'd you drag me into this shit? Like, I'm like, wait a minute. Well, that was, that was really where she fucked up. Because Noah was just like, wait, I thought we were talking about other people <laughs> and their power. <laughs> right. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm evil? Right, right. We, 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 you like say, not you. You're good, right. but them, <laughs> right? right. No. We got to get rid of them. It's, it's, it's that thing we should get on the, the lines where you, you know, fuck you, fuck you, not you. You're cool. Fuck you, fuck you. It's like what the fuck, yo? yo <laughs> even you, the like pamphlet that Lauren picked up, it was like, so <laughs> you say your powers are a curse. <laughs> <laughs> like, my God. Looking for a cure? Yo, yo, <laughs> now that's, that's a Captain America PSA I would love to see. Get in the, oh, get in the game. Okay. So you blew up your school with your powers. <laughs> it's just, wait, what? What are we doing here, guys? I don't know. I don't know about this. So, so even when she, when she was calling the powers like a disability, I kind of got an itch because I never heard mutant powers described in that way before. Because they had... um the girl that was that had down syndrome but mm -hmm. could control floral uh uh plants and all of that i was just like wow you you're calling some of these disabilities so you're trying to cure it but so i just start going into the whole r youtube rabbit hole of what if <laughs> okay so you cure this what if the government gets this then they can cure everybody even people who want to keep them so well, it, how do you prevent that was you like, it, there was not enough questions being asked like you know you don't go to the doctor oh yeah um poke me and prod me go ahead you, you're a professional no ask questions well it's, it, it's end around eugenics i mean that's what really what it is right. and she she basically is eugenics under a different rosier name that starts off so innocent it's like well we're just helping people it, it's it's the it's one of the things that, you know, again, the movies don't really cover when it comes to X-Men and the comics do. Like you have your X-Men and your 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 you have your X-Men and your mutants that have powers that uh aren't um as let's say offensive or as destructive. But what happens when you have a mutant that can't hide their ability, like the Morlocks, or you have a mutant who literally cannot function because of what their powers are, you know? it then becomes a curse and uh, to them. And so they look to, it's like, yeah, you can help me. I'm here to help. But then when you see what people are doing, it's like, Lauren was like, well, if she gets my blood and she can then cure the X gene, it's going to start down this rabbit hole of maybe they even, I think they even kind of went down the road of maybe she's not going to do this. But like, like you said, what if the government gets a hold of this? Then they're, you know, what if parents then are forcing their kids to, to, to be cured and not giving them a choice? It's like, it's just, like you said, it's at least this big slippery slope rabbit hole that you don't want to go down. And um, yeah, I also love the fact that, you know, Kate being Kate was kind of on some like, well, do we really have to do it? I mean, she's helping your dad. So um you know, Kate still, I, love, I love that Kate still has her little white liberalism 53% self with her. Just kind of going like, well, do we really have to do the right thing here? You know? She's fighting it, though. She's uh, fighting. Well, I She's mean, fighting the good fight every right, well, struggle. She, she, she <laughs> went along with them, and, and, and Reed was basically like, no, we got to do this. Like, Lauren's right. I'd rather, you know, deal, you know, not be cured and not be helped than force other mutants to be forcibly, you know, um, basically neutered. Uh, Yo, did you believe Reed? Hmm? I believed him. I did think you believe I, he was like, I'd rather help others. I mean, he's like, I wish I could touch shit. Well, no, no, no. I think he struggled. Like, I, I definitely think Reed had that moment where he was like, basically going to be on some fuck him shit. But I also think Reed is, it, it, it's this thing where with, with the Struckers, you see Lauren has always been 
the 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 foundation, right? She's been the one that's been more grounded because she's the one that one lived with her powers longer than anybody else did out in the open. She hid them from her parents, and she knows what her parents are thinking. Uh, Andy's off. We'll deal with Andy later. Uh, Reed now has his powers, and he's finding out all this stuff about himself. So he's kind of like in the middle where he's struggling with his identity. And Kate is just Kate. Kate's the only human one right now who still kind of defaults to just being completely human and not understanding because she doesn't live with this. Reed, I think, literally, I, I like that he's struggling. Like, you can see at one point, Reed was basically like, so, I'm just here to help myself. But then he, I think he also was like, but fuck, I'm part of a larger thing, and my daughter here, and I think he's trying. It's, I think, I think he struggled. I'll put it that way. I think he's struggling. But trust me, if Lauren wasn't there, <laughs> I think yeah, Lauren out. really is the moral compass for that family because God <laughs> knows her mom and dad ain't shit. Right, I and think, Andy. Yeah. I think I think I think Kate would have convinced Reed to just keep keep the mouth shut and keep going forward. Because uh, yeah, uh, if Lauren, no, but like there. we can say that now. But like, put me in Reed's shoes and be like, I really miss touching shit. I mean, I, you, but I'm I, extra pure though. He's like, you got, you, you got a few? All right. Let's <laughs> right, 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 right. Yo, how many, how many of them joints you put in your pocket, yo? Seriously, how many of them you put in the pocket? <laughs> right. Like, you're tracking like a crackhead. It's like, yeah, you got any more of that cure? You got any more of that shit? You know, let me see what you got. But no, I mean, I, I, honestly, I, but I think that's why I like it. I, I like the idea that you have these family members that, are, honestly, even when you throw Annie in there, each family member of the struggles is representing a different part. Like, you get where, even if they're wrong, you get where they're coming from. Like, I get Kate not understanding because this is all new to her. She now has a family. She's now the ad, odd person out in her family, right? He's the only one that doesn't have mutant powers, at least that we know right. of, you know? So, I mean, they could be doing some, I don't know if any of you guys have seen uh, Three Identical Strangers. They could have been doing some strange shit there. So I don't know. Um, but, you know, Reed is the former, I don't have an X gene prosecutor who didn't understand mutants was kind of a mutant hater himself, finding out that he's actually one of them. He's like that, that person that finds out all of a sudden that, you know, that, that quote unquote white person who finds out that they're actually like light skin black and that they're actually are a nigger. And so they could get Tyrone bigger. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Cause Tyrone, well, after I, 44 years, he divorced his wife. Why? He said she was a nigger lover. Right. <laughs> uh, God damn it. Um, Andy, is all again puberty is not your friend <laughs> and he's all in emotions but you get what his rage is and you get where andy's coming from he's wrong and how he's he's portraying that but you get why andy's making the decisions he's making um and i got him to a point well again to a point i'm not saying he's right i'm not saying he's right he's also young and dumb and you know where we remember where he came from he's he's coming from a position of a kid who got picked on and never had any power now he's super powerful and again just like you know you you get any villain to a certain point he goes too far and you're like yeah kid but you're making a lot of bad decisions here i get it but you're making a lot of bad decisions and then you get lauren lauren who seems to be the most grounded who you know got her powers uh kept it hidden from her parents because she knew her parents wouldn't understand then try to protect her brother as much as she could and is really trying to hold her family together as best as she can and let go of the people she can. She's kind of sort of let go of Andy because he left. And now she's trying to help her dad and she's making decisions to help her dad, you know, uh, the best she can and make him uh, help him understand what he's going through. So like you get where every one of the trucks is coming from and they're in different positions. And I love that, you know, when they announced this show, when they told us that they were going to put it in from the point of view of two human parents and their, their mutant kids, everybody was like, I don't know about this shit, but the way they've done it, I think really gives you perspective into all the avenues of, you know, what's going on with what mutants are dealing with and, and, and their struggles with humanity. Um, um, what else was I going to say here? Um, Can we Go ahead. Now can we talk about the, 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 the daughter of Magneto? Okay, so <laughs> what I really loved about this is that we got the two flashback episodes. We got Marco's earlier this season about his dad, which was kind of reinforcing that Marco was going to try his hardest not to be his dad. 
And then we get Lorna's and her whole arc is coming to terms with who her dad is and becoming more like him. Mm-hmm. I just love that, that parallel. Well, they made, well, I like, I like <laughs> because she fully kind of accepted and, and embraced what being the, his daughter truly means. Mm-hmm. Insofar as she was even able to say, he wasn't hiding me from the world. He's hiding. He was, it wasn't hiding me, the world from me. He's hiding me from the world. Mm-hmm. And she ends up with the parallel actions at the end when she eventually makes a headdress and says, I'm truly my father's daughter. But it's, it's nice to see her confront and then not just have this, I never want to do that, but to see the, the, the recognition and the, the understanding of the sacrifice that was paid. Mm-hmm. No, no, I thought it was great. I thought it was great to show that, you know, you know, he wasn't being some absentee father that he was staying away from her because he wanted her, you know, to survive. And he knew that he had to make a sacrifice of not being there for her. And like you said, the parallel of her doing the same thing for for her daughter, you know? So, no, I thought it was great. Jeff, you were going to say something? Oh, yeah. I was just saying, it. I'm sitting there and they're telling this story and I'm just thinking to myself, Yo, do I feel sorry for Magneto right now? <laughs> like, like they made him a sympathetic figure, and I'm like, yo, he's actually a legit dad. Like, he's like a like he has that compassion that those shades of gray where when we were kids, you know, it was like Magneto evil, uh, X Men good. But then when you grow up, you're like, oh, you know, my Magneto kind of lived through some shit. Like, I, I I feel him. He might be a little extreme, but I, I get it. And it's, this just gives they give him so much context without mentioning his name. It's oh, it's yeah, almost that as... that's just the illest part, one of the illest parts of this show. And the fact that she made her headdress out of an uh, a, a comic book toy store replica version of, of his and stretched it out with her powers to create it, I thought that was like off the hook. It's yeah. uh, it's almost as if you're trying to say you said all that to say Magneto was right, but you know. <laughs> just, I'm, just, I'm just just throwing it out there. It's just this seems what I heard from all that. I'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to be here if it's gonna be that. <laughs> I'm just saying he said a lot, dude. Just get around. I just Magneto was right. I'm just I'm just going. I'm, I'm not gonna say it again. I just had to get out one to what? How was I not? Go, there's no way you got on this episode and thought Let's that I was gonna say this one. I, I, I just I, I'm <laughs> just saying. I mean, I gotta put that out there. Just you know, he he had some strong no. points. I really lo- like I just love that whole arc and I love finding out about Lorna's backstory and her her aunt. I loved her aunt just like trying to trying to raise a bipolar, sullen, mutant teenager. And I love that Lorna Lauren even told her in the end when she brought her daughter, she's like, But I thought you hated it here. She's like, No, I was a bipolar you know, mutant child living in like a backwater place with no Wi Fi. I'm just basically, basically said it was like, no, I was a normal teenager. Of course, I hated it here. It's like that's every teenager hates their little town they grew up in, and that's what they go through. It's like I didn't hate you. It wasn't it wasn't a reflection of you. It was just that's what teenagers do. I loved you. I loved I loved I loved everything you did for me. I was just being the typical teenager that typical teenager can be. I also, just having to have powers. So you know, mm-hmm. what can I say about that? You know. <laughs> Um. Uh. So not only that flashback. What about the flashback with uh, Rebecca? Man. So I really like how they opened nine with that. I thought they did a really good job of communicating, like the 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 weight of the moment, like kind of the betrayal, because it was clear that whatever happened with the teacher was obviously an accident. But she, you feel as betrayed as she does. Are you, are you sure? I think it was really strange the fact that that moment hit so well, and the the climactic moment with Andy and her. Felt so hollow to me. I don't know if it's felt for anyone else, but I rewatched it in preparation for this podcast, and her death really doesn't it doesn't resonate as much as the betrayal of her parent. So that's my thing. I I I was with you on the betrayal of the parent until they said you almost killed your teacher, and I was like, I don't think it was an accident. I I don't because I I also got the feeling like just the way she like bounced in that room and the way she just like casually displayed her powers like that. I, did I also felt like that maybe the parents were being terrorized? No, I think they were. I think, I think the parents were absolutely terrified of their daughter. I think that like deliberately fucking with them. Like, I think she like basically was controlling them. That, and, and we can, and we can read it like that, but we also can't divorce that from the, uh, 
the atmosphere around mutants at the time. Oh no, no. So, so here's what I think. I think both were kind of true. Had, if, if an accident did occur, they might act the same way. True, I, but here's but what I think what they were trying to demonstrate was that the treatment of her pushed her to this place. It's mm-hmm. homicidal. Oh, I think I think so, but I also think that. So I think there's, I think I think both can be true. I think that. I think from Rebecca's point of view, she definitely feels betrayed by her parents. And I'm not saying those, that feeling is wrong because they, I mean, they definitely did call some little services on her. But I also feel like Rebecca was also that person because at the end when, when she turns, she tells Andy, was like, no, we're going to kill Reva and all them. And he's like, no, 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 wait, we can leave. I think you didn't see that. I, I don't necessarily think that the, her being put in that facility is what made her fucking nut i think she was always that way and um you know when given the opportunity to just leave and say hey listen you know we don't have to kill them we can go off and do our own thing and be happy honestly i think Andy doesn't realize this he probably saved his own life because the minute you upset her like mm-hmm. i think she would have probably killed andy too like i think i i just don't think well, Rebecca, andy was on the list. huh <laughs> andy was on the list yeah i think yeah. I, I think I think that but I think that's what makes I, I think that's what makes this show so good is that there's so many different ways to read it and I don't necessarily know what the right answer is. It could just be that was it was it being put in the box, you know, by Riva? Was it being betrayed by her parents that made Rebecca the person she is? Or was she always a a terror and somebody that you actually had to watch out for and should have been locked up? Was she actually a dangerous mutant? beforehand and, or was being locked up what caused her that like i don't know what the right answer to that is i just know she was fucking terrifying yeah and so that brings me to the end of the episode because i mean yes this is wrong societally and as a whole but i'm sure every single mutant that was locked up at least 10 percent of them needed to be locked up <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, we can't just let everybody go. This is not his plan from Delhi. We're going to go to Africa. <laughs> well, well, remember, 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 we, we kind of did this before. Remember when they, when they um, brought Rebecca out and they let, the, they let all the prisoners out of the psych ward and they were like, oh, uh, yeah, the prisoners are killing each other because some of the people are actually fucking nuts. And so some of them weren't, but some of them are. And so, like, it's this weird thing of when you have this, um, when you, I mean, honestly, from a mutant point of view, when you have this police state, um, you get people that actually do need to be locked up and actually are dangerous society, put in with people who are locked up for the most mundane things at all. Like, remember the guy who died was somebody who was locked up because he didn't want to get, they, it was something stupid. He was trivial. He was locked up in the psych ward for because that's what they did, right? They just, well, you didn't give me the answers I wanted. So, oh, and then the, um, other, the other chick, the one that went to the Morlocks, same thing. It's like, got locked up in the psych ward with the, with the other crazy people. Because they she didn't give the answers that they that they wanted to hear, so they locked they give her a choice either you you agree to it or we lock you up in the psych ward, right? Um, but then you get people like Rebecca who like, oh no no, she absolutely deserved to be locked up because she was a fucking terror and she needed to. And if I remember correctly, in the previous episodes, I didn't watch them. I think even the doctor even kind of admitted that like, no no, her parents had her locked up because she was fucking like nuts. So I think she was torturing her parents beforehand as well. And, um, yeah, I mean, remember she killed that dude in the car when, 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 um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, John and, 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 uh, Clarice were tracking her down. She had twisted that dude all the fuck up to take the car from him. So it's like, Rebecca's a bad person and needs to be locked up. But when you lock everybody up because they're a mutant, you kind of miss the fact that, you know, you, 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 you make it so that you, you can't. I don't, I don't know. It's hard to pick out who deserves to be locked up and who doesn't. And I love the fact that this show makes you question that. It makes you question, you know, what made Rebecca crazy? What, what was it, you know, was it always in her? Or was it the product of the environment she was living in? And honestly, I don't know what the, the right answer is. Like I said, she just terrified the fuck out of me. Like, I think at one point Andy was talking to, like, he was talking to Esme or something like that. And it's like, she's not crazy. I'm like, motherfucker, she killed 37 people. <laughs> She killed yeah. 37 Ugh. people. What do you mean she's not crazy? You know? And it's not like these are people that directly, you know, affected her. These, and, and this other thing, too, like, I don't think anybody really was, 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 was sensitive to this, and maybe because they didn't believe it. 
But they were like, oh, man, Reva seems to be kind of upset about Rebecca. I don't know why. I'm like, you do realize she killed the dude that Reva actually cared yep. about. Like, Reva actually well, loved so, that dude. And so that was when I knew Reva really loved that dude because <laughs> when Homegirl was like, uh, we should let her out. She's screaming. She was like, let her scream. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was like, wow, okay, Reva. <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna front though. When I when I saw the flashback, I definitely got Twilight Zone wish you in the cornfield vibes from from Rebecca. Like she she had a hold on those powers a little too well and was giddy about it. And not giddy in a way like, oh, I'm doing something cool. It's oh, I know how to fuck you up with these powers. And 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 I can understand why her parents um were reacting in the way that they did, but at the same time, you are sending your your kid away to sentinel services. It's not like yeah. rehabilitation. That that's something that I, I think it could be a I, like you said, Chris. I think it could be a combination of the two. Maybe she wasn't all the way right up there, and maybe just being betrayed by her parents. She's like, oh well, if these humans are going to do it to me, and fuck all the humans, I'm well, killing I, everybody. Yeah. Well, I will say this: your, your life is better. I will say this though. I don't care what she did to the teacher. I don't care if she was torturing the parents before at all, right? I will mm. say, watching your teenage daughter turn perfectly made pancakes inside out to see that they're blueberry and then eat them with a fork like that, I'm calling some of those services. I am. I'm sorry. No, that's I, call, call that's me how evil. I knew call me evil. homegirl was terrorizing her parents because I'm like, you don't do that. You, you just don't do that to pancakes for no reason. I was like, they were perfectly She's made like, pancakes. blueberry. I'm like, why do you want the blueberries like just on top of a, she, a bunch of mushroom? Because she doesn't like surprises, pancake Shana. <laughs> <laughs> she made the deep I'm calling the pretty clear her parents. She made trying to surprise her with these pancake bullshits. <laughs> she made... that would have been my mom. She would have got beat. Fuck the powers. <laughs> she would have got beat. She would have got beat on top of those right, made, for fucking up perfectly good pancakes. How you make? How you make? It's been a long time. Someone hit that girl. Uh, and, 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 and I anybody, dare you to use your powers. I dare you to use your powers. And did anybody else? Know, so, so, so not only did she just turn the pancakes into like fluffy mess. Did anybody else notice? No syrup. Oh. No syrup. That's a goddamn terrorist guy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is, I, is she my mind? Get out of eating them, uh, the, the fruitless one by one. Right. That's, that is a goddamn terrorist right there. They had a little goddamn terror. So as soon as I heard I the carpool, I'm like, oh, that's animal services. Good God. Good, good. I love how the doll, doll, dad goes. <laughs> like the mother was like, and they're like, did you hear anything? No, I didn't hear anything. Oh, maybe it's the gardener. I'm like, oh, God. You guys are terrible. Like they were terrified. <laughs> they were fucking Terrified. <laughs> dad, dad was like, "Yo, I don't want to be here." Caught. Dad was like, "I don't want to be here, so I'm gonna go ahead and get up." Uh, <laughs> Dude who came through the back door had me crying because he rolled up on her, and then he was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> like, Yo, just turn around. Yo, the fact that she turned around, she was so startled, but he already saw that he was in the lot of fire and realized it. Like, mm-hmm. uh, turn, and, you know, he's like, "Central services, don't don't make a move." And he, I know in his mind, he was like, "Please, don't make a move." Oh goodness, man, I'm just like. Uh. Yeah, I saw the, the pancake thing. Which was just like fucking terrorist. Yeah, lock her up, lock her up. I'm sorry that 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 was a lock her up thing. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, look, I, I kind of side the parents here on this one. Um, all right, so I got to ask this question: Who's having a more difficult breakup this year, uh, Cisco or Marco? Because <laughs> Cisco was going through the beginning of this the flash. I think he's kind of turned around now. Uh, but 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 Marco's kind of going through it too, yo. Like I don't know who's having like. I feel like both of them are just like need to be. Having some slow- oh, you mean not having? I forgot who Marco was. <laughs> Y'all, you know what? Leave Marco alone. I feel like they are just determined to break my heart over here at the Gifted because they're fucking with all my couples. Marco singing to Baby Dawn before he had to give her up, just my whole heart broke. It was so adorable and sweet and sad. <sighs> Like I like yes. how I like how they had Lorna show up at the door, basically going like, "She's gonna do the right thing. She's gonna come back to Marco. Maybe even maybe maybe she doesn't come back to him. Maybe she gives him the child." But then I was like, "Wait, if she's worried about the child being in danger, why would she give it to Marco?" Then I was like, "Oh, this is not gonna go how I think it's gonna go." Oh man, she shows up basically like. I kind of wish she had just made a phone call because like that probably would that probably would been easier <laughs> than showing up to this man's door with the baby going, "Yeah, basically I'm gonna ship our daughter overseas." Excuse me, what? Kiss your baby goodbye because you ain't gonna see her for a while. <laughs> right, right, right. What, what do you mean I'm gonna say goodbye? Like I haven't, even, I haven't even seen. How am I, How can like, I let how Marcus was like? 
I can't say goodbye to somebody I've never even really met like that. Like I hold her for like two seconds. Next like time Marco sees that baby, it's me. Where's Daddy Alex? You, if you don't stop, I, I, I just want to know. <laughs> not Marcos. Auntie Scott. <laughs> not, not Marcos. I hate y'all so much. <laughs> I just I don't like how Lorna treats him. I can't decide if Marco thinks or knows that he can't take her or if he just is refuses to fight her. But I just I don't he can't know. take her at all. And he has to do power, something. He's basically Jubilee. <laughs> wow. You can't fight my needle. Did you, did you see that? Did you violate? <laughs> you violate. I would like to point out that you have so far done nothing but disrespect Marco and friggin' defend Rebecca's craziness. I'm just pointing that out. I'm I mean, defending Rebecca's craziness. I, I question if this puts her over the edge. With Marco, I'm sorry, my man is a oversized Goku shirt away from being a 1999 um, kid who went to the light shows and shit like that. No. I mean, come on, Shannon, be serious. Do you really think Marco's going to take the Lauren we saw at the end of this episode with her, with her steel toe boots, her spikes jacket, and her little green tiara? Like, do you really think Marco's still on his uh, baby's first uh, rave? Uh, yo, I don't. Think- I think that even if Marco could take her, he wouldn't because he loves her. Oh, how about oh, that? His love is why he's going to get his neck snapped by this <laughs> magnetic bitch. Okay, Mar- Marco's yeah. can't even take a shower. He hasn't showered since they broke up. All right, like. He smells, <laughs> he smells like a music soul child CD. Wow. Really? Wow. wow. <laughs> Is that what we're doing? Okay. Incense and regret. <laughs> Man. Anthony Hamilton playing in the background. All the brown liquor. <laughs> Mystic- all, the slave, all the slave spirituals, Negro spirituals. <laughs> <laughs> Mistakes were made. <laughs> Yo, Shanna is going to kill everyone. <laughs> I just would like the I'm record so to show Shanna. that I am not participating in the bashing of Marco. We're not Yo, bashing Marcos. We're just we're just stating facts here. All right, <laughs> your boy Marcos is going through some shit. Like I said, even Cisco got his shit together. Like Cisco got a, like a little pep talk and, and got his shit together and started, you know, actually helping out. Marcos literally just like I don't know, man. He's just he's kind of been out of it. You know, but I, but I, but in all seriousness, I, I I like the fact that they're doing this. They're showing that the mutant underground, the main this main branch under John, has basically completely fallen apart. Down to the part that you get down to when they do this one that, that one mission. There's there's three of them, right? And then 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 Clarice leaves. You know, and so you're seeing the desperation here from them. As I, I feel like and I had this in my notes. John is definitely being reckless. He is, but he's also the only one that's trying to stay on mission and try to get the work done. He's the only one that's trying to do this. I just don't think that they have the... I, I think he's not realizing that like there's nobody else with him right now. Everybody else is gone. Like The Struggers have gone off on doing their own thing. You know... They lost. They lost. You know, Lorna and Andy already last season. You know, Clarice is one foot in the door, one foot with the Morlocks trying to help them out. And then you got Marcos, who's honestly, like you said, sitting here burning incense and playing. You know, nothing but slow jams. So it's like John's kind of here on his but, own. He's trying to do his thing, but it's no. like there's nobody there. Go ahead. John is doing too much. John is doing too much because mm-hmm. one, he thinks that Homegirl is about to go be with the Morlocks. And also, he's become desperate because if he can't fix this, then why did he even become recruited to the X-Men? Why did the X-Men leave them in charge if he can't fix this? So he he's losing it a little bit. And I mean, I love him to death. We know this. But yeah, he's doing too much. And like um, Blink said, he thinks he's invincible. Like, Number one, he's not invincible. Number two, just because you are bulletproof doesn't mean the people around you are bulletproof. So maybe not. Let's not walk into a situation where people will have guns. How does that sound? Well, I think I think part of the problem in season or in episode nine was that because it was a mid season finale, I feel like they rushed a lot of the plot lines, like the like the John and uh, Blink that storyline felt rushed. Mm-hmm. Mm. You mean to get to the point where they were beefing like that? Right, right, right. Because I think they kind of felt like us writers, like, oh, so Mrs. Finale, everything's got to be in a certain place. And I felt like 
we we got a very quick escalation to where the anger between John and Clarice was like, yo, maybe if this is built a little and simmered some more, it just felt a little out of place, a little rush. I get why they did it. Just so it didn't land right for me. And well, see, I, 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 I actually thought it was actually well timed because they've been building it up since. And, and I don't know, maybe I, maybe it was like what episode five or something. Whenever they had the episode where where uh, that one the the lawyer uh, mutant basically told him that he failed the X Men. And, and and ever since then, that's when John's been kind of been reckless. He's been reckless because he's oh, no, been... I, I, mean, I mean, not John's recklessness, but more his like accusatory tone towards. Oh Bruce. yeah, yeah. The, the thing about the thing about him when she was like, "Do you think I'm? Do you think something else is going on there?" He was like, "Well, I'm like that." I was like, "Okay, I don't, I don't buy yeah, that." that. Yeah. I mean, that was too far. yeah, that was too far. Yeah, but everything else, I'm like, I was like, we need to simmer down, boy. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, we like, jumped, jumped a lot of uh, uh, of spots here. I'm like, I mean, yeah. dude, dude, she just walked into a firefight with you for because of you. Like, like you were gonna go out there and do it by yourself. She followed you through that door. Like, a one fire falls you into the firefight. Like, she's there with you, dude. She's not calm the fuck down. Um, but you're right. I, I he is being reckless, and I think he, he he's he doesn't want to admit it, but he's trying to prove that you know he's not. Like you said, he's not a fuck up. And and honestly, everything that's happened is not his fault. Like, if you go back and look at everything that's gone down with this, John's not at fault. Now he's getting to the point where he's being his fault because he's being reckless. But the stuff he was doing before, it literally wasn't his fault. It's like, it, it's, you know, it's just too hard. It's too much for what they're trying to do. Like, the, the mutant underground wasn't set up to be a strike force. The, the mutant underground wasn't set up to go head to head with, you know, uh, the inner circle. That's not what the, the mutant underground was. It's an underground. It's like an underground railroad to help mutants out. Like, they're not set up for this. And I think that what this show is going towards is, that they need to change their mission because that's that, and they need to set up an ability to do that because honestly, he's just trying to do too much. He's trying to be um, the X Men, but he doesn't have X Men. You know, he has, you know, families that are trying to stay together. He has the Struckers who are, you know, dealing with, you know, Reed, some sudden, sudden, sudden manifestation of powers at the age of what, I guess, like 40. You know, you have uh, two of your most powerful mutants left to go to the, join the inner circle because they have promises of a mutant homeland. You know, it's just how can you fight that? How? You know, there's nothing. I don't know. I don't know what you're going to do uh, with the mutant underground in this current state. And he, he even brings up that he's feeling the pressure of the other mutant underground stations are kind of, you know, it, you know leaning towards the inner circle and what they're what they're promising even with the the fuck up from the the, the episode seven where uh, rebecca killed all those people and they brought more heat on the mutants it's like it's it hasn't really swung people to his side yet so i i i, I kind of feel his desperation but he's he's really fucked up now he's captured by dickhole uh jace turner so jace man um, I don't know if he can come oh, back. I'm sorry, this is the podcast where y'all taught me in the or someone was defending Jace, I believe. Mm. I'm just saying, I don't know if he can come no, no, back. I, 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 oh, there you are. Hey, Shanna. <laughs> Shanna, you saw those jeans he was wearing? If you think he's still, <laughs> if you think he's not all the way gone, he, he's out of far hands, baby. <laughs> My man was wearing flannel and bootcut jeans. Like that. All, all, all Stop that the, jeans. the only thing, the, the only thing was missing. The only thing was missing when he picked up John's head off the car and he didn't say, "You ain't from around here, is you, boy?" Like that's the only I'm thing was missing. You, yo. I'm telling you, <laughs> I tightened up as soon as I saw him. I was like, "Oh man, like, he should have been wearing like a Confederate flag." Um. Button down. I mean, they had they had the purifier flags close enough, yo. <laughs> Just, he basically was wearing a white button up and it carrying a tiki torch. First, first of all, first of all, I trust nobody. Trust nobody who drives around in a truck with those kind of flags to stick it on the back of the truck. Like it just like or magically or magically gets my blood pressure up. It's just like this doesn't make any sense. Why do you have flags in the back of your car? Like what is what are you doing? It's like oh, and that's all the purifier stuff. I was like, oh god, that's not good. Not good at all. Just mm-mm. Nope. and then he's doing the um. The friggin' like now he's on the TV with the pundits, just being just extra racist on television. <sighs> Jace, why are we here? Some people say you're a hate group. I just call myself a patriot. I busted out laughing. I was like, no, I, lo- I love yo, that. 
wow. That's why I love this show, right? It makes you, it, it, it does all that shit, and you're like, oh, God, he's, he's, he's getting hearts and minds, though. You, you just, you're like, oh, he's such a, we, we see through it, cause we, we, we hear it in real life, and that, that you know, that, that, that all right bullshit. We, we're seeing through it, but I'm like, you know, he's winning hearts and minds. Like, in, mm-hmm. in that world, he's winning hearts and minds. He's getting it, and you're just like, Oh, this is good. This is this is exactly why they wanted Jace Turner, and I'm just like, this is why your wife left you, you piece of shit. Like you, you are gone. The thing that's so messed up is they're doing something similar on Supergirl too, where you know they they have like these pundits, and it, it is the hearts and minds thing. It's like, how do you fight that? You can't punch that. But that's the thing I, I love. That's the thing I love about comics, right? Comics, comics us is. And and this is why you know not to go on the little, the little tangent here with the comedy motherfuckers, but this is why it always drives me crazy when people go get 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 politics out of my comics and I don't like seeing that comic. It's like but the comics have always done this. It's always been there, right? You know that the comic uh, God Loves Man Kills, the X Men comic had this similar thing. You literally it, it wasn't like a TV pun. It was somebody literally a preacher literally there preaching that kind of hate shit. Reverend you know, William Stryker. Right. It's like you had that shit there. It's like it's always there in comics. It's always been there. And so, you know, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a recurring theme and something that the comics always go back to. And it works. And I think it works because it's something we see in real life. We can we see it today. We see people doing and saying the exact same shit. And it's so funny to me because when you read it in comics or you see it on TV, you see it in these shows, people go, oh, wow, you know, I can get it. I can see, see why that's happening. But in real life, you go, so when we as black people say this and this is happening, you don't, it doesn't nope. resonate with you. Make them. America great again. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't, nope. re- you don't see how that's similar. Okay. 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 Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, but no, Jace is, Jace is just, Jace is gone. Jace is, Jace is gone. Like, I'm, he's, mm, yeah, I need him. Mm, yeah. I mean, uh, and again, this is something we also have talked about on Supergirl. It hurts more when it's a person of color that they cast in these roles. Oh yeah, yeah. It just does. But I think I think I think it's also a point thing to see that you know there's always somebody else at the 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 at the bottom, and, and that's why I also love it when it's a when it's a it's a black male character too because it's like Jason Whitlock is his name. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I mean, no. I mean, no offense, but y'all are the weakest link. I mean, it's true though. It's like, <laughs> you know, you have people that you know have lived through this, and you and you forget until they experience it themselves. I mean, honestly, it's a recurring theme in this show itself. Like, look at Reed. Reed was the same way, right? Until Reed starts, mani- even in- until Reed's power to manifest himself, even he was like on some. Well, I mean, maybe we don't go that far. Maybe we shouldn't do this. Now all of a sudden, he wants to be gung ho. You know. Oh uh, yeah, we gotta destroy the you know you know he had to be convinced a little bit, but he was like, yo, we gotta destroy these things. We can't let this stuff get out. We gotta protect. I'm like, that wouldn't have been Reed uh, if Reed didn't have powers and Lauren wasn't there. Wouldn't have been doing it. W- wouldn't have done it. Okay. He had to experience it. It just it's that thing. Until people were in those shoes, they don't. Unfortunately, it's just one of those things. It's like people lack a natural empathy. People get empathy when they start realizing that they can that they can experience it and they or they have had experienced it. But to see somebody else struggling and see what somebody else is going through and never having lived that experience and still going like, I trust and believe in you and I will support you in what you're doing and, and, and get you the help you need. People lack that natural empathy. And it's just something we see in real life, too. And it's just it, it's kind of sad. But, but conversely, it's something else we, see, we don't see in real life. And I, I mentioned this on the mailbag that <clears throat> everyone should listen to Mark Bernard and Kevin Smith's review of Into the Spider-Verse. But one of the things Kevin Smith mentions is that comic books are modern mythology in that, yes, you can look at real life examples for heroism and whatnot, but there's not a person in the world that I've ever met who's a better person than Peter Benjamin Parker. And the reason why watching John get arrested is because at the core, we know that John's doing the right thing. John's sacrificing himself so that the, 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 the team can succeed, but we also know that that's not how people actually operate. And so I think it's very interesting here, as both, and also in comics, the juxtapose the real world where it's, these are these awful things are happening, and this idealized world where here's how we wish we would react to them. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. I will also say this. Um, hey, John, maybe you shouldn't have run off Clarice. You probably could have used a teleporter at that point. 
Just saying, or somebody could open portals. A little bit. Just saying, could have, <laughs> might have been useful at that point. Might have been a little bit useful. Just, just throwing it out there. Can we also just, you know, quiet as it's kept? Fade has been in the background murking people for Reva. <laughs> yo, I'm, I was just about to bring that up, yo. It's just like, yo, my man Fade turned into a silent assassin, yo. Remember, this is a dude that used to drive the fucking. He just, he used to be the guy that he used to be the driver. He used to be a driver for the Mutant Underground. Now he's out here basically being a sneaky assassin, yo. First he almost he captured Rebecca, almost killed her, threatened to kill her. Then he literally put three shots in old, old boy from uh, Regiment, yo. Just like, my man, yo. Like, And then also tried to basically justify, he was like, I just came for him. Right. <laughs> like, like you didn't just like shoot past two of your best, supposed best friends. Like, I just came for him. I mean, it is horrible. I mean, he's not wrong. He did just come for old boy. And it's not like when you find, like, I love how, I love how that dude, so let's talk about this. I love how a dude try to downplay. It's like, no, nah, man, we just like make refrigerators. That's all we really do. Come on, man. What do you really, <laughs> not your refrigerator. I mean, okay, like, all right. So, because of security, there is just like one little small thing that we do do that maybe injures mutants. It's just, it's not even really a big deal. Like, what is it? I, I mean, I mean, it's not even like a big deal of our thing. It's not like the refrigerator we do in the... Like, did I talk about the refrigerator? Like, they're really, really good refrigerator. Hey, dude, what are you talking about? I mean, I'm just saying, if you need a refrigerator, get a... Dude, tell what the fuck... Um, all right, so we do control the mutant collars of the... Um, the mutant suppressing <laughs> collars for all the prisons. What prisons? All the prisons. Why didn't you lead with that? that that's actually a pretty big fucking deal. Like, I just love how dude tried to, like downplay what they did like it wasn't a big fucking deal it's like dude all you control all of the mutant like first of all first of all can we just say what a shitty system that oh. all of the mutant <laughs> okay, so there's that, but there's also the fact that the systems that we actually use so when wikileaks happened we all said that yes there were things that should have been released but no the response was not to mass dump it are there mutants who should be released yes should you mass dump them absolutely not Right. Just you know. to have a single point of failure, though, like right. to be just, just, <laughs> like it's anybody, like building a Death Star and having one an exhaust port that can blow up the whole fucking thing. Oh, weird, weird, weird. It's almost like you I mean, but it's almost like somebody planned that. <laughs> right. It's right. almost like it's a trope. Right. Right. <laughs> but I was just like, really, guys, you're gonna have all the mutant colors in one place. Like, that's not a single point of failure at all. That, that you watch them break into seven. Different facilities over the course of the season. Hmm. But you get different pieces, not the I, one. I, I mean, no, no. I mean, I'm not, hey, look, this this is not me. This is not me doing a critique of a trope. I get it. It's fine. I'm just saying that maybe next time I have a backup, guys, because you guys <laughs> right now <laughs> you guys are about to lose that contract. I'm just saying. Well, that's and, what it. It just bothered me that old boy was really gonna continue to lie about it because I'm like, <laughs> but you okay. like. They told you that, like, they we've already seen them go after two places, and we told them that your place is next. It's time to just give it up, buddy. <laughs> like, why are you still trying so hard to protect well, and, whatever's in there? And, and we and we laugh about the trope of it, right? But let's not let's not act like this doesn't happen in real life, right? Like, oh, yeah. the single point of people- failure is is actually way more um plausible than people would like you to believe. Um and and technology thing like there was a thing about how you know the drones that they were using overseas were being hacked by like stuff you could buy from ba- Best Buy like because the the government when they when they when they put the Wi Fi in the drones they didn't go for the encrypted Wi Fi they went for the regular Wi Fi that could be easily hacked and so you literally had uh not just terrorists but just random people hacking into the drones that were literally in theater overseas it's like this dumb shit it, it seems dumb and it seems like nobody would be dumb enough to do that. But um, you'd be surprised at how many combos are actually the combination for luggage from Star War, uh, from Star uh, Spaceballs, and are like one, two, three, four, five. You'd be surprised. Like it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's actually kind of scary. So, um, 
as dumb I thought was going to tell him that he could tweet from the fridge. If you'd have said that shit, I would have been crying. Then <laughs> <laughs> tweets from my refrigerator. Right, right. You just, like, I'm, I'm serious. You guys, you guys want a microwave? I can get you guys microwaves. I'm just saying. Anything you guys need? Um, we can outfit your entire mutant underground. Dude, just tell us what the fuck. Okay, fine. Find the Friends the and family, 30% off. <laughs> even, even I was in there going like, what What could they possibly be after? What, like, you know, what, what, are, what you know, uh, Reeve was over here saying that she, because I'm not going to lie, when... Rebecca killed 37 people and you have, you know, there's, you know, you know, humans up against and you know, rising up against, you know, not rising up against, but like cracking down on, on mutants and these open clashes. I mean, the idea that they literally, these, these humans literally attacked a, the purifiers literally attacked a, um, a, a, or a, they didn't say it was purifiers. So anti-mutant groups attacked this, uh, bigots attacked this, um, uh, foster home for for mutant children. Like, see this going down. You're like, and Reva doesn't seem shook. She's just like, no, we're fine. We're just part of the plan. We're we're, fine. we're a little off script. Could be we shouldn't have killed those people. The plan's still in place. I'm like, what could this possible plan be that that has her still so confident? And again, why is the episode called Game Changer? And uh, when they turned off those collars, I was like, oh, that's why. That's what did it. Uh, yeah. So we've been getting action movies for about what twenty years now. This is the first mutant prison break, complete with an, a, a guard getting set on fire, like spontaneously combusting. Like for all the bad ideas that led to it, it was a very cool moment to end the season with this prison break. This 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 image, this visceral, just this this you couldn't escape it. It was really really impressively pulled off. Yeah, I mean, it's like, what do you do now? Like I said, because it goes back to the idea of even one of those facilities, they with the supermax facility, since it was a facility like they broke Rebecca out of, where some of those some of those uh, those prisoners weren't of si- sane minds, and although they were attacking her, name is Rebecca. She needs to stay home, huh? <laughs> she needs to stay in that jail. Well, yeah, she she. I mean, they they broke her out, and it seemed like the same kind of facility that she was in, where it's like some of them were attacking other 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 prisoners. So it was like they were attacking themselves, and. So then my, 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 my question then becomes, was Reva literally trying to, because it seems like Reva always has these other plans, right? So was her plan just to release all these mutants and take their collars off and stuff like that and that be the, the end of it? Or were there a certain set of mutants he was trying to get out to help her go with her in her next plan? Or, like, what's the next step after this? Like, because she's always had some plans and it seems like her plans are robust enough so even when they have some... some <laughs> I don't want to call 37 people slaughtered hiccups, you know, but she kind of treated it like a hiccup. <laughs> so, so what does she have planned next? And then the question also then comes, uh, what's next for the mutant underground? Because John's captured now. Clarice is God knows where. Um, Marco's is saved fade. And, and where's he going back to? Cause there is no mutant underground anymore. Like, I'm guessing the struggles come back. And I it, mean, it, they were also losing people before that because Marcos was on the phone with folks trying to get them to come back. Was he so, on the phone with the, coming back or was he talking to other? I thought he was talking to other mutant underground stations. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. I like, I feel like he's trying to like hold it together. Like this is a, this is a network. We're all working together, but they're like, no, it's become too too much like we have to just either like lay low or get out of the country like there's no options anymore mm-hmm. like there's no fighting back well that actually goes back to you know what i was thinking about with uh with the, the structures and, and being with the doctor you know with, with mallory and them uh, that campus felt like i think they even kind of did it on purpose felt like you know the Charles Xavier school, they were like, Oh no, we are a campus. You can go to school here and everything's fine. You can just, you know, live your life and everything, you know, it'd be cool. And we have mutants inside. We're helping them train with their powers. So it was like a, a, a fake, like, you know, Xavier school. And then you find out that, no, that's not really what's going on here. That she, Mallory's still also kind of, kind of an evil person and shit like that. So there really isn't a safe base for, for mutants right now. And so with Reva and in inner circle promising this mutant home world, that, oh, home, homeland, it's going to be very, very enticing. And right now, they're the only ones getting shit done. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, so, yeah, I don't know. 
I don't know where we go from here. I, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I'm, I'm glad I waited to watch this episode because now I can watch the next episode next week. <laughs> It'll be fine. But yeah, man, I, I, this is, I, I love this show so much. I love how they do it. I love how everything always ties in to real life and you feel it. I mean, we didn't even talk about a little bit, them, them really hitting home about the idea of, of Andy and, and Lauren having two exogenes in them. And, mm-hmm. and and how how their powers are working like the fact that Andy was feeling when 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 Lauren, Lauren was getting um her blood taken Andy was feeling it in his arm you know so this this shared um shared X gene and DNA that both of them share what does that mean you know and where's that storyline going to go and how's that tie into the overall you know storyline that's being told in the show like I don't know I I I cannot. I, I can't keep speaking highly enough about this show, you know, and this is, you know, again, you guys listen to the mailbag, you hear deep on, I talk about another show on a streaming service that people pay for, um, <laughs> that I won't mention my name. Uh, but I, it's just one of those things that if you make a good show, even if I, you, if you make anything good, even if I haven't trusted you in the past, like Fox has fucked up some things. Fox did Gotham. All right. Fox continues to do Gotham. Gotham. Thank God after this season, I think Gotham's done, right? But they did (laughs) Gotham, right? So Fox has fucked up some things before. And so I was nervous going into The Gifted, even when they first talked about, you know, the the plot line for The Gifted and following the the, 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 the human, the two humans and their mutant children. It's like, what the fuck is this shit? But this show has been more X-Men than anything that Fox has done in their movies. It just has been. And I, I appreciate everything there. I appreciate, I appreciate the nuance they, they approach these subjects where we can have a discussion about Rebecca's crazy ass and go like, seriously, what caused her to be, what, what caused her to be crazy? We can talk about like, you know, if, if Lauren wasn't there, would Reed have gone for with destroying those samples and, and not having a cure? Um, you know, what is Reva's plan? Like, what's the, you know, uh, what's the, What's the end goal for the, the, the inner circle? And while they're not good, are they really, really, you know, that bad, you know, in, 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 in the eyes of other mutants? Like, we can have these discussions because this show makes sure to uh, keep the nuance that has to be there with X-Men. Like, when it comes to X-Men and when you come to certain villain mutants, you have to make them seem like they they have a point even if their methods are wrong even if they are dead wrong you got to make them relatable and have a point and they've done that with reva in the inner circle um we know they're wrong we know they're bad but you're kind of looking at 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 john and them running around trying to stop them going uh maybe you get your shit together first (laughs) you know i i don't know man they seem to have a kind of have a point here so I don't know. I'm really looking forward to seeing where they go forward from this. Um, anybody else, anything else you guys want to talk about with these two episodes? I can't wait for this show to wreak havoc. I'm just really excited for um, um, the summer day to come and be brighter for um, everyone in the, in the show. And uh, R.I.P. Marcos. Anyway, so <laughs> what I was going to say was that um, the other thing that I did think when with the Lorna flashbacks is you, the thing that people don't really talk about because you always talk about like Scarlet Witch and uh, what's his name as Magneto's kids that like at least they had each other. Like she has really been alone. She has had almost no one. His so name is I just. Pietro, he was an Avenger. Well, come on. I'm just saying like they always had each other and I just. Lorna, I I feel a lot for Lorna and what she's going through and what she's trying to accomplish. Yeah, for the one that has the closest to her father's powers, uh, actually has her power powers. Um, and um, you know, suffers from bipolar uh disorder, and she's been through a lot. And I love that this show is it, it shows that she's been through a lot and shows that she's, you know, Lorna's is an interesting character because she she's you know trying so hard to do what she thinks is the right thing. Um, even though she's kind of still been manipulated by the frost triplets, you know, Mm -hmm. um, 
And you see this. She's, she's, she, she thinks she's doing the right thing. She thinks she's doing this stuff for her daughter, for Don, and she thinks she's making the right decisions. And so, and, and you get why she, you get why she's doing that. You know, like you said, when they, when you think about the flashback with Marcos's father and then the stuff with, with Lorna was dealing with, you know, not knowing her father and not wanting to grow up to be like him and then realizing that, well, he was actually doing this to protect me and kind of seeing that he was a point, even though, again, I'm not going to say it. But like, you know, it, you, you understand, you understand where she's coming from and what's going on here, even if it's not the right thing to do. So, um, what are you guys looking forward to for, uh, when we come back next week in the next three episodes? Looks like Laura's going bad, excuse me, going bad. She's fed up and with her powers being fed up, it's not really going to be a good time for anybody. So I'm, I'm looking to see. One thing is I'm looking to see whether or not that 2X gene trait causes the people who have it to eventually um, be more aggressive and, and um, in the way they act. Because she, it didn't seem as though something completely pushed her off the edge, but she's making a turn. Um, at least that's what it looked like from the previews. And um, I, I still love the way they show powers on the show, where... Uh, like Marcos was in the car and he's hearing gunshots like, yo, what the hell's going on? And <laughs> Clarice is like, open the trunk. He's like, what? Open the trunk. And she puts a portal in the trunk to drop dude off and then portals them into to, to get away. Like that, I wouldn't have even thought of them doing that. Like that, that just seemed like something like movie quality uh, use of the powers. Uh, so I, I just love the way they use powers on the show and I, I want to see them do it in more ways. Yeah, um, I, I just want all my couples to have a halfway decent ending to this season. <laughs> That's cute. That's Evil cute. laughs. That's I just, this is what I get. This is how I'm treated. I'm just, I'm just, prepare yourself for not, you're not getting that. Just, just want you to prepare. Uh, <laughs> what you got? Um, like you just said, full Lorna Hill turn. Um, I'm excited to see what future, what the brightness of the future is going to bring. Because remember, season one, Lorna turned broke bad by taking down a fucking jet. Mm. And so, like, the next step for Lorna is pretty unnerving. We've created a world now that we've never seen in multimedia, kind of a world where the greatest fears of the humans have been realized. It's always kind of, particularly in the, the movies and the cartoons, it's kind of, Oh, here's a sample of what it could be like. Now they did it. They broke these 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 literal chains that were holding down their people, and uh, we're going to see what, what the results of that is because things are getting a lot harder for the underground because they lost their leader. They lost, as Chris mentioned, the only per- person still waving that X flag so proudly and highly. And we're going to see who steps up and steps aside going forward. Yeah, everything you guys said uh, except for the the couples guy. I think the couples are. <laughs> I, I mean, I, you you know what? I'm I'm also the baby here. I do kind of hope that John and Claire, Clarice uh, reconcile. Cause, there you go. Stop lying. I'm trying here, man. Come on. Give me. Give me I'm You're just trying. saying that so she doesn't take your job sooner. <laughs> wow. I mean, could, could you at least wait? Could you at least let me, let me, let me get it out there and then quietly yes. like text me later on and say, I know what you were doing. You could just have to call me. Just had to call me out here. I wanted to get it out now before I forgot. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks. Um, no, but seriously, the um, the, you know the greatest thing I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to uh, in 2019, the gift of continuing his streak as being the best X Men property, live action X Men property. Even though um, Dark Phoenix is supposedly still coming out in June, and um, New Mutants, I, I guess is, to, I. I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. I'm really, I'm really interested in seeing if they ever put, if they ever put New Mutants out. Just because I, I just want, at this point, I'm turning in, this, New Mutants are turning into a Venom thing for me now. I have to see it if it comes out because I want to see how bad it is. I just, I never, never forget, New Mutants was supposed to come out last April. Th- this April. It was supposed to come out April 2018. And like a month before, they decided to delay it. Then they delayed it again. No, and, they delayed to October, then to the first quarter of 2019, now July. And, and so, is, is it July? I thought it was August. Oh, God, if it, if it comes on July, it's going to get slaughtered. 
But what? I, I don't can't know. But... Wait for April to come around and for them to say that actually Dark Phoenix is not coming out until December. Oh, it's too late. It's coming it's out. It's going to be awesome. No, it's going to come out. It's, they they got to put it out. At this point, at this point, yeah. they have to put it out. And I cannot wait to see how bad it is. It's. Oh, just, <laughs> mm. I'd be surprised if New Mutants came out because. The deal should close I, I, January first. I, I am not. So, I am uh, I, again. I think this is one that Deepa and I are in agreement on. I I am so not believing that movie's coming out because again, it's one of the movies. <laughs> at least with Dark Phoenix, like uh, even the Dark Phoenix Twitter page put something out. You know, because they were trying to get in on the conversation that was happening over the, the holidays. New Mutants has been dead silent. Nobody knows what the fuck is going on with that movie. So. It's not happening, right. as far as I'm concerned. It's just not. So they push um, that all the way to Disney's books. Like y'all handle that in 2019. Right, right, right. right, right. New Fox, we not, we not, we not hit, taking that hit. We just gonna keep kicking this can down the road, and if you guys just put it in the garbage, then we understand. We understand. Well, we understand. Not my problem. Right, right. Can we just can we use that? Can we just get roll that into our existing like deal, and we just say, you know. We'll pay you back for that. Just, just go ahead and pretend like it didn't happen. We'll scrap the whole thing. So. New Mutants was the player to be named later. <laughs> right, 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 right. That's in, in a in a salary dump. Right, right, right. You just 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 dump it out there. Um, all right, folks. There you guys have it. That is our review for the last two episodes of The Gifted. We'll be back in three more episodes. Uh, I think that we're going to episode fifteen. This uh, episode fifteen is fifteen episodes this season. So that means the next two episodes we do should be three episodes each. So. Stay tuned. We look forward to talking more about this show in 2019. Thank you guys very much for listening. And until next time, we're out of here. Peace.